That was very informative. I didn't know any of that, so it's very interesting. Thank you. Now, our next speaker is uh, Carol Woodhead. Uh, Carol is an old friend of Triangle and of Meds and has spoken here before. As many of you will know, she's the CEO of Hermes, uh, formerly Parcelnet, which is a specialist home delivery service provider and part of the worldwide Otto Group. Over the past few years, Carol has overseen a number of significant changes at Hermes, which have seen the company transformed into one of the most successful and profitable home delivery businesses in the UK today, delivering over 100 million parcels each year. Carol began her career with Grattan in 1987 as a graduate trainee and worked her way through various departments and management grades, gaining an understanding of the processes that support a strong home shopping proposition. She was appointed CEO at Parcelnet in 2004. She's been on the acquisition trail as well. She bought uh, Red Cats UK Courier Network in 2007 and also the TNT Packet Network uh, in 2009. I think she's got a lot to say and I'm looking forward to hearing it. Carol, over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Robin, and hello, everybody. You know, events like this, people often ask me, what's it like being a woman in a man's world? And so before I start to actually share my thoughts on the topic, I thought I'd share some thoughts on that first. And the way I thought I might do it is firstly to give you a few insights as to the type of things I spend my time doing, and then pose the question, are they really any different doing it as a woman? So I spend my time doing things like talking to customers, people in the industry, general networking, finding out what's happening out there. Then, I think my PA thinks I spend a lot of time in a dark room waiting for somebody to turn the light on, but actually it's about looking for the vision. What is it we aim to do and to be? Looking to inspire the team, to give them a common sense of purpose and to take them with me on the first step to achieve the vision. And of course, to make selective investments and to take good control of our costs. And while I'm doing all those things, trying to be ever the professional. So, okay, that's the sort of fairly straight stuff. And then we say, well, how, as a woman, would I view that any differently? Well, let me share a few thoughts with you, mainly men out there in the audience. As a woman, it becomes socialising. Dreaming about what I really want to do. Talking. And lastly, shopping. And I have to say, I love it. Anyway, just a few insights. The topic that I have for today is building a home delivery service that is fit for purpose. And the purpose, I hope you would agree, is largely defined by the end customer, with a little bit of help from the carriers with some of the ideas that we have about where we think we can take the services to next. And so where I focus my attention today is really two questions mainly for the carriers in the room, which is how do we deliver great services for our customers and create shareholder value. And then moving on from that, how do we reinvest that value to build sustainable businesses for the future? And so if we start off with thinking about clients and customers, well, they are very demanding, and why shouldn't they be? We've heard a lot of different themes today about what are the most important things to customers, and I've just picked three here to illustrate the types of things that they're looking for. Multi-channel is here to stay it's proven that the multi-channel customers spend more money than single channel. I think all retailers would love to have 99% plus of their orders delivered on the first attempt. And yes, of course, everybody wants premium delivery services, but they only want to pay standard prices. And if we think then onto the, the end consumer and what they're looking for, we know that online consumers find it really important to them that they have delivery choices. And we heard from Snow Valley this morning about the emergence of the three-tier delivery service offers so that we have premium, standard, and super saver. And that's all about giving consumers choice about value, choice about the cost, and choice about the service. And I don't think we can move off thinking about customers until we think about what the next generation of customer is looking for. And we've developed a strap line at Hermes to try and sum up what we think the next generation is looking for. And actually, I'm going to credit this one to Rob Kay, who sat in the audience. We think the next generation are looking for deliveries to homes to store, to Europe to box, to many, but never too late. And in the words of a very great man, Alexander Orloff, simples. I only wish it were. I only wish it were. And so that takes us on to the carriers. 
And I think we have a lot of choice as carriers in trying to, uh, to develop home delivery services that are fit for purpose. The first question is dead simple for us, and that is, what is it we really want to be? What is it we're aiming to do? Yes, we all want to deliver to home, but do we aim to be specialist and just deliver to home? Do we want to deliver to everywhere else as well? Or are we looking at somewhere in between? We talk quite a lot about whether there are still two markets of B2B and B2C, or whether they are merging together. And certainly what we've seen is, is over the past years, B2B carriers coming into the B2C space and working in that premium area. But I think now is the time to ask the question, are you satisfied with being perhaps a niche player in the, in the B2C sector at the premium end? Or do you also court the mass market? And if you do, then what does that require you to do to your cost of production to be able to service the mass market as well as the premium end? So we've got some choices about where we're going to play, what markets we want to serve. Then I think we've each got to ask ourselves, what's our USP? Are we putting ourselves out there and differentiating ourselves on service and saying we provide either the best range of services or the best quality or we provide the best information? Or are we about being the lowest cost provider? Or there's somewhere in the middle, which is where I'd put Hermes, which is to aim to be the best value for money provider of services. Then I think you've got to look to your business model and say, is the business model, are my hubs, my depots, my fleet, my final mile delivery solution, are all those aspects really well configured to provide the USP that I've just described there, not just for today, but for the future as well? Are the assets designed to give you flexibility? In tough times like we've been through in the last 18 months, did your assets allow you to really take down your cost of production so that if your volumes went down, you could take your cost down with it? Looking to the future, we're all aspiring for growth. So do your assets allow you to grow easily? Do they allow you to launch new products and get them out there? And critically, I think, and becoming more important, is your cost of production right? I think we're all actively looking to take costs out of our business to pass them on to the consumer. But I just sense that the hunger for that is getting faster and faster. Because I think as well we have to not kid ourselves. Yes, we're here to create uh, and provide great delivery services for our customers, but we're also here to create shareholder value. And whilst there's different definitions of that, the one that I've chosen is that we're here to make a profit. And so what I would suggest to you is that building a home delivery service that is fit for purpose has three parts to it. It's about deciding the right services to provide to your customers, it's about being able to make them at the right prices, and it's about being able to make the right profit so that you can reinvest back in your business for the future. Perhaps the most obvious statement uh, I'm going to make is that home delivery is a volume business. And we clearly see that scale drives cost efficiency, which can create wealth. Wealth to reinvest back in the business, either in innovative services for customers, or in reducing prices for customers, or perhaps both. There are many strategies for growth, and I think three obvious ones are that we can compete, we can collaborate, and we could also consolidate. And I think in practice, in the industry that we're in, we're going to be doing all three, and probably all at the same time. Now, I think collaboration is an interesting one. It's a lot easier to talk about than it is to do. I think there are some great opportunities out there. If we think about servicing the to what market, then carriers can work together to provide multi-channel reach, international reach. Uh, we could even look at servicing what I call the sheep and seagulls terrain. Between us, we put too many part-empty vans and part-empty courier, courier cars out into the rural areas of Britain. Wouldn't it be great, and I have to say this is dependent on IT systems, wouldn't it be great if we could find a way of working together in a multi-user network in those rural areas to provide a more, a more environmentally friendly and probably a more cost-efficient solution? But we've got to get over the hurdle of the IT piece first. There's a small example up there that I've been involved in, which is a collaboration with DPD that we call Home Call. And that's quite simply two businesses that have found that for a very defined customer set with a certain set of service needs, that actually we work together to provide them the best service proposition, where essentially DPD provide the inbound leg and Hermes provide the outbound leg. And so I think the question for us all here today is do we have the appetite to do more of this type of collaboration? Can we find the strategic rationale that bumps us up the list of priorities? Because these things always take a lot of effort to do, uh, because they're not easy. Perhaps irrespective of the answers to those sort of questions, one thing that is inevitable is that we're going to see more collaboration within the industry. There have been several major players operating at a loss within the industry for a number of years, and I think we'll all sat here saying we're over, we have overcapacity. 
The industry is oversupplied, even though the market itself is growing. And therefore, the one thing I think we can say is that in a few years' time, we're not all going to be here. What it does make you think about is, well, how much consolidation is likely to come and how quickly? And we've talked quite a bit about Europe today. And if you think, in many of the European countries, there are something like six or seven major players in our industry. Whereas in the UK, when I count up, I can easily get to 12 or 13. So do I think we're going to reduce from 12 or 13 to 6 or 7? Probably yes. Probably yes. So I want to move on to my second question, which is, having thought about how we deliver great services and we deliver shareholder value, then how do we create sustainable businesses for the future? And I went to the Retail Week conference a couple of months back, and I actually stole this first uh, sentence here from uh, one of the speakers there. I thought it was a really great goal. They were saying that the retailers need to invest in technology to reach customers wherever they are and to trade with them on their terms. And actually, one of the examples that was given was eBay, who was saying that they've seen in the last year the, the final emergence of the mobile phone as a shopping channel, with over $600 million worth of, of, of shopping purchased over that channel last year. Now, I think that goal translates equally well for the home delivery carriers, that we need to be doing this as well. But the caveat I would put to that is that I think you've got to look for affordable investment, high-tech where it's necessar necessary, not just high-tech because you can. Because at the end of the day, your customers need to, need to feel that it's worth investing in themselves. What we also need to do when we're looking to the future is to think about our own operational networks. And it's back to the same questions I was asking earlier. It's not only the physical networks, but it's also the information networks that support that. Have we got the links in the right places? Are things physically in the right place? Have we got the right size fleet? Do we work in the most economic way that we can? Because there's one thing that is sure as we go forward, that the prices are only going to go down, and therefore we have to take costs out of our production. And it's perhaps a bit of a smug statement, but those who succeed will surely be those that get their strategic judgment and their timing right. And so what about sustainability itself? Undoubtedly, our end customers are increasingly demanding low carbon, but of course they would prefer that they don't pay anything for it. I'm going to predict that retailers will increasingly use this as a selection criteria for their carriers in the future. And so we have to make steps and we have to take action now. The first tasks in a topic like this are all about measuring what you do and what you use. But that's not enough. You don't fatten a pig just by measuring it. You have to take some actions. I'm sorry, that's not a very good phrase from a vegetarian, is it, stood up here, for those who know. <laughs> Thank you. So the first wins, having measured what you do and what you use, you have to set yourself some targets. And then the first wins are all about improved efficiency. And these are really dreadfully unsexy, but they're really fundamentally important. And it's through things like better vehicle routing to reduce the miles that you cover, driver training to use less fuel, more aerodynamic fleet so that you use less fuel. And we at Hermes take this quite seriously, and we've been doing an amount of work over the last couple of years. And on a like-for-like -like volume comparison, we've taken 4.5% off the amount of fuel that we use in the last year by doing some of these very fundamental, boring, but necessary things. So I can stand here and say that it works. It does have an effect. And so in summary, I leave you with a thought that carriers must deliver great services for their customers, but also create shareholder value that the customers of the future are looking for delivery to home, to store, to Europe, to box, to many, but never too late. And therefore, we have to select the right services that we can provide as carriers, sell them at the right prices to make enough profit so that we can reinvest and have sustainable future businesses. And yes, while we're aiming to do that, we'll all be competing, collaborating, and I'm predicting consolidating as well. I think those who win will be those who invest in technology to reach customers wherever they are and trade with them on their terms. And I do encourage you to get involved in sustainability because it will become a selection criteria for the future. Thank you very much. <laughs>